Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Garage Gym Athlete Podcast. I'm your host, Jared Moon. The Garage Gym Athlete Podcast is a result of my desire to build better humans, unequivocal coaches, and autonomous athletes. I've spent the last several years obsessing over program design, nutrition, and every other way you can optimize human performance. This podcast distills the latest scientific research with what I've learned and blends it with the not-so-scientific field of mental toughness. We are here to build you into a dangerously effective athlete. If you enjoy this podcast, you can find out more about our training at garagegymathlete.com. And if you want to pursue more into the field of coaching and programming, head to endof3fitness.com. Thanks for listening. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Garage Gym Athlete Podcast. Jared Moon here with Joe Courtney. What's up, Joe? How much, man? How's it going? It's going pretty well. Excited because we have Brian Liu here today. What's up, man? What's going on, guys? Not much. I'm excited to get into this. You've been a part of the community for a while. I know some of the other things that you're doing um, with Murph and whatnot, so I can't wait to dive into all of it. So uh, I will throw it to you, you know, just a basic introduction, who you are, what you do, how you train, where you're from, all that good stuff. Okay. So, uh, my name is Brian. Um, and, uh, so I live in New York, uh, in one of the, uh, more suburban areas. Uh, I'm not in the city where, uh, it's crowded and, uh, it's super like congested wherever you go, but, um, I work out of a one car garage. So it's spaces about 18 by, uh, 20, no, sorry, 18 by 10. And, uh, I didn't start out that way, but, um, uh, I, I work for the city, so you could say I'm a civil servant, um, you know, just doing uh, some paper pushing. Uh, but my my job is really more uh, geared towards uh, con- contra- contractual work because uh, our agency, our city agency owns a few buildings. So uh, I guess you could say we're more like uh, landlords. So we take care of a lot of like the tenant stuff. Um, but yeah, uh, so I've been training uh, at home. Um I'd say for at least like 16 years. Um, So uh, the whole reason why I even started training at all is because I played high school football. Um, And so uh, it was just one of those things where, uh, you know, you've been working out for so long that or the the idea of working out or getting in shape or just the idea of strength has been ingrained into you since, you know, those times. So, uh, um, so I, I, I didn't, I didn't work out at all or anything during college after high school. Um, and then I just wanted to get back into it. And, uh, I went, I went to the gym. Um, and then, uh, after a while, like being a broke college student, you know, it started adding up because at the time it was like 60, $70 a month. And it was practically more than two thirds of my paycheck. And I was just like, okay, this isn't working out. So, at the same time, it was the height of the, uh, what do you call it? The Tony Horton, uh, program, um, beach body. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So, so that's when I started and I'm like, um, okay, so, you know, this was kind of cool. The whole muscle confusion thing and, you know, like, uh, whatever's personality seems kind of cool. So, uh, I just, I just canceled my membership at the gym and I started in, in the basement with just, uh, power blocks, uh, the original power blocks went up to 50 and, uh, just like a basic, uh, folding incline, decline bench. And, uh, I, I didn't have a place to pull up, uh, to put a pull up bar, you know, for all the pull up workouts. So I just made some makeshift, like, um, rack lift type of pull up thing. So anyway, yeah. So after that, uh, we moved into a new house and, uh, and there was an option of a garage. I'm like, oh, awesome. So, you know, I was looking, looking, looking on Craigslist and I finally found an R3 road rack for uh, $500. And at, at that time, it was a steal. So I got it, got my plates and everything. And here I am, like uh, 15 years later in a different house where, because before in the previous house, I was still living with my parents. Um, and then after we got married, uh, we bought a house uh, not too far away. Uh, pretty much almost the same setup. And, uh, you know, my wife was pretty, uh, uh, pretty okay with, uh, me turning the garage into, uh, a full workout space. So, uh, here I am, um, have a bunch of stuff, uh, rower, uh, airdyne, um, you know, plates, adjustable dumbbells that go up to 90. Uh, yeah, I mean, pretty much whatever I need, um, for the workouts. That's awesome, man. And, uh, 
how cold are we talking in New York? I know different parts of New York can vary quite a bit temperature wise. Do you, does it get pretty cold in the garage there? Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, in the home gym, uh, uh, the one by Koopa, the, there's always like these posts about like, uh, um, heaters and stuff, but I, I just, I just don't have a hoodie as you see now, but, um, you know, it, it definitely gets cold. Uh, it, it gets as cold as like, you know, negative, like, uh, or single digit cold, but, um, it's definitely, it definitely gets hot here. I don't have a fan in here at all. So, um, you know, I, I definitely have like pools of sweat, uh, during the summer workouts, but yeah, I mean, it's not too bad. You throw in a hoodie and, you know, and you grip the bar and you're, you're good to go. That's awesome, man. So yeah, you, uh, you made the journey. I think all of us have at least had one run in with P90X. Is that true for you too, Joe? No, no, <laughs> people, did, no. people did it on active duty, but like I was either went to straight from bodybuilding stuff to like cross the workouts. And I didn't really do the, the whole tape thing. Uh, it was funny when you said the, uh, whoever was Tony, um, Horton. yeah, Tony Hoden. I thought of Tony little, which came before, which was like VHS, very short, short, bulky buff guy. Uh, it's funny because my, my parents had those tapes. Uh, yeah, not speak. Yeah, that's awesome. man. Well, um, I thought everyone had had handled P90X at some point. Uh, so you did move to, you know, more barbell training 15 years. Um, so what kind of training have you been doing uh, during that time frame? I know now you, you're you're doing some garage gym athlete training, but, you know, there's a lot of time before that. So what did your training look like? Yeah. So it was mainly just, you know, whatever I found online, um, you know, it's just like free resources, you know, at, at the time, the, the idea of getting a coach, uh, you know, back when I first started, um, other than just doing like beach body videos, um, you know, pushed by Tony Horton and, uh, whoever that, uh, standing guy is, uh, I, I forget at the moment, but, um, it was just really finding whatever. Um, and then I, um, in my weight loss journey, um, prior to that, I, I, uh, I was just on the bodybuilding.com forums and, you know, I was just looking, browsing through the different, uh, sub, um, uh, I guess subcategories. And so I stumbled upon the, I guess the workout, uh, I guess sub form. And, you know, uh, there was things like Wendler's five, three, one, there was, uh, the starting strength, you know, stuff you know, by, by Mark Ribbletoe, you know, this, those Mac house five by fives. So when I moved, uh, to a place where I had a garage and I had the barbell and rack. Um, that's when I started, okay, let's just try this five by fives. Let's just try the, the five, three ones. Um, cause at the time it was really just, you know, like I didn't have the ability to throw weights around cause it wasn't my house and I didn't want to, you know, line the whole garage with stall mats. Um, mm-hmm. so all I did was really just like, you know, barbell work. So I, I did mostly power lifting and then, when I started the weight loss journey, um, uh, my cousin actually, she, she asked, Hey, do you want to do like an obstacle course race? So I was like, all right, sure. Why not? You know, like I, I figured, you know, it can't be that bad. Um, and so when I did that, it was just like one of those like small 5k, uh, sprint type things, but it was a rugged maniac. Um, I don't think they're around anymore. Uh, but it was rug maniac and it was all right. Uh, I did it in about like 50 minutes, which was a little disappointing to me because I thought it was a little, be a little faster. But, um, after that, uh, I, I was a little disappointed and I was like, okay, you know, let's, let's next time I do it, let's do, I want to do it faster. So I didn't end up signing for another rugged maniac after, but, um, I just, you know, just started browsing around and I came across like some group on deal for Spartan race. And I was like, Oh, you know, this is cool. So I was, I was debating about a Spartan race. I didn't know anything about Spartan race, but at the same time, also heard about tough mudder. I'm like, all right, you know, these, these seem interesting, you know, these seem pretty cool. So that's, um, I didn't sign up for a Spartan race yet. I signed up for, uh, the tough mudder. Um, and when, uh, at the time that was about six to seven months out. And I, and I figured, okay, you know, this is about 13 miles. I never did anything more than like three miles. So I started training and that's how I started uh, running. Uh, that's how I started doing any sort of form of running at the time. It was, it was more about, you know, just running, getting used to just putting in the miles and uh, where I work. Um, I actually work next to the Brooklyn bridge. So um uh, if you've ever walked the Brooklyn Bridge or if you know uh, 
yeah, basically the Brooklyn Bridge has has an incline going up and then it levels and then a decline going down. I mean, both sides. So, you know, I have the the, the fortunate blessing of being able to work next to like uh, some place where I could do hill sprints. So I, I, I do, I've done hill sprints, I guess you call hill sprints, uh, basically incline, decline types of stuff on the bridge. Um, and it's a great place to run. Uh, and so before a garage gym athlete, you know, it was, it was a lot of, you know, make your up, make up your own like uh, type of workouts uh, for the cardio. In addition to whatever workouts that you find online, whether it's when there's five three one, you know, five by fives or uh, Lane Norton's um, uh, what do you call it? the the fat training protocol. Um, so I was just I was just doing a whole bunch of things, and then the only reason why I found GGA is because. Uh, Coop's uh, Facebook group, you know, there's always like posts like maybe once every week, like, hey, you know, what are you guys doing? What are you guys training? How are you training? And everybody's throwing out things like, you know, CrossFit Lynchpin um, uh, you know, and some other groups. And, you know, th- there's a handful of people throwing out Garage Gym Athlete. And I'm like, oh, you know, I, I work out in my garage. You know, I, ch- I checked you out, you know, a couple of times. I didn't really sign up for the trial yet. But when I did, uh, you know, it was it was a good experience, and and I like what you guys are doing, which is why I decided to stick with you guys. I appreciate that, man. And yeah, you're you're involved with the community. I know. Um, last I checked, you were doing the the Murph project. How's that going? It's going good. Um, you know, before um, before the Murph uh, or, or anything, I mean, I've 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 seen all these uh, workout of the days, all these. Uh, you know, hero workout of the day stuff, but you know, I never thought I could do Murph because the idea of doing pull-ups was one of the worst things that I've never really could do consistently in my life. So, you know, I never knew that you could partition it, but, uh, so after learning that you could partition it, I figured, okay, let me just try you know, one workout. And, um, yeah. And so it's, it's been good. Um, I, I started, I started without a vest cause I didn't have a vest and it wasn't something that was required in all the other type of program workouts. Um, and so, you know, I started out with, uh, the five ten, five ten, fifteen 15, cause that's what I think what most people have been doing. Um, and so, uh, I do have a vest now. Um, I've gone back to unvested uh, for now cause I just wanted to, work on the pull-up uh, endurance aspect of it because um, I know I got a little comfortable uh, with the 5, 10, 15. And, uh, you know, it, there's always that phrase that uh, that you coined, the killing comfort. So doing the 10, 20, 30 definitely kills more comfort than uh, at least the 5, 10, 15 with the vest for now because, you know, 5, 10, 15 with the vest, you know, you could always pound out five. Or well, I mean, at least for me, like always pound out five, rest a little, but you know, unvested at 10, it's, it's always a struggle towards the latter sets to get in at least 10 straight. So. Yeah. That's, oh, go ahead, Joe. To, uh, to dig a little bit more into that. I, I noticed earlier, earlier you were talking about when you're building your gym, you had issues getting a pull-up bar set up and then now you're doing Murph to, and you mentioned pull-ups working on those and over your head, I, I've seen that before the, uh, the multi-grip, uh, pull-up bar situation. Was that like yeah. a, a recent shift this past year or, or, or just, recently that you just really wanted to get better at pull-ups for like goal wise or progression wise? Yeah, definitely progression wise. I want to get better at pull-ups. I mean, with Lay Norton's, uh, uh, fat training protocol, whatever that he, he does have like pull-ups programmed into it, but you know, they're only like three reps, five reps, you know, nothing, nothing insane. And, um, and so, yeah, so the, the, the attachment that you see above my head, that, that, uh, different, uh, grips and with the ball attachments it's uh it's it's part of it was part of my gym for two years uh, i mainly got it for grip workouts um for the the spartan races because you know they do have obstacles mm-hmm. where the grips are like um just awful uh you know with whatever spiraling thing that you just have to like trudge across but or swing across too but so yeah so uh i mainly do neutral grip um because the regular grip bar is hard on my shoulders and or i just either don't do them right so but yeah definitely the murph is mainly for the uh the, the pull-up progression that's great yeah i think um pushing yourself in those increments is a, is a really good strategy too because i think once five pull-ups does become easy uh, that's how I progressed when I first did it. You know, I tried like these bigger and bigger sets, you know, up to where I was doing 
20 on, on pull-ups and it definitely becomes more challenging. And then it's just a matter of speed versus, you know, overall efficiency on how you're going to get it done. So I think, I think that's a great progression, man. I think that will actually make you a lot better at pull-ups and a lot of people don't progress that way. So I think that's awesome. So yeah, you've been doing it for 15 years. I'm assuming you like training in your garage. Is there any like struggles that you run into on a daily or weekly basis these days? Uh, yeah. Um, I have three kids. So, um, uh, before the pandemic, I, I, I've always worked out, um, in the mornings before, before, uh, work. So like a lot of the, uh, the GGA folks, um, you know, we're up at like three, four in the morning, five. Uh, and so, um, the, the struggles right now is, uh, I guess getting used to working from home. Um, and then, you know, the idea of, oh, Hey, I, I can sleep in a little bit. And then, but then the kids, you know, where we have them remote learning, uh, from school. And so, uh, we, um, yeah, definitely the struggle is there to say, Hey, you know, like I can sleep in a little, but then, you know, the workouts might take into, or might, uh, I guess, uh, tread into the time in which we have to wake them up for school. So, um, so for the times that I guess I, uh, I under miscalculate the, the workout time, how, 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 how much it would take. I hear, I hear the kids up and I'm like, Oh, my wife's going to kill me. Or, you know, I, she needs help with breakfast, you know? And so, uh, so, so and my kids are like eight, uh, six and two. So, uh, but yeah, you know, that's, that's one of the, uh, the things, um, I, I don't really consider weather or any sort of temperatures as a deterrent, unless it's like snowing outside where I can't run or if it's like torrential rain. I know Mark Bishop, he likes running in the rain, but, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. Eight, six and two. That's the exact spread I have. So I know the, uh, I know the struggle or the challenge there with those, those ages. Um, all right, man, well, let's get into some of these other questions that I'm very interested to see what your responses will be to some of them. So what's the hardest workout you've ever done? Uh, so I'm preparing for, uh, for this podcast. Um, you know, I, I thought to myself and I guess, I guess like the, really the, maybe, maybe I can respond in a way that's like the three phase of my life. So the hardest workout, uh, I guess when I was younger, um, you know, when I first started football was, was the very first football, like spring camp workout. And, um, it was just, it was just a lot of like uh, stadium runs. So we would just run up like one side of like the stands and then down the other, the other side. And then you would just repeat that like 10 times. And it was just like, I was just, I, I had to stop because I wanted to throw up. Um, but it was good. You know, it, it was it like, you know, that first spring, uh, spring training camp and, you know, uh, summer camp before, uh, before the football season, you know, I, I ended up losing like 20 pounds just, just because it was something new to me. Um, so that was the hardest workout. Um, and, uh, when I first started working out at home, the, the hardest workout at that point would be, uh, would be that first P90X, uh, workout. Um, it, it was just totally different because being in the gym, um, like an actual commercial gym, you know, you're, you go at your own leisure, you waste time as much time as you want sitting there on, on each, uh, machine. Um, but whereas, you know, when you're a part of the, some sort of video, you know, you're, you're being pushed to, to, you know, your rest times are limited. And so, so that was, that was hard. And I, I, I want to throw out, uh, for that one also. And then, uh, for this phase of my life where I actually have, uh, some sort of garage and some sort of programming, whether it was GTA now or some sort of Wendler's or Lane Orton's in the past, um, uh, I guess, I guess it's a toss up between, and I know a lot of people have said this, uh, Spartan race. So it's a toss up between a Spartan race and a, and a, a road running ultra that I did a couple of years ago. Um, uh, that the, the ultra marathon was, was about 37 miles and it was, Dang. it was a lot of, it was, it was a mental battle more so because it was nine loops around central park um, the inner, mm -hmm. uh, loop of central park. So it was, um, it, it, it's after seeing the same thing for, for the sixth time, it was just kind of like, Oh, I like, I just can't wait to like get this done. So, so it was definitely a mental battle in that, in that respect. Um, for the Spartan, it was the ultra, uh, over about 
in Vernon two years ago. Um, I had never wanted to sign up for the Spartan Ultra knowing how difficult the beast was. Um, so when I saw those on the course with the, uh, with the Jersey, I was like, okay, I'm never doing that. And then for some reason, I, I, I kind of lost my mind at like for like a second at some point. And I <laughs> said, oh, well, you know, let's just sign up. So I signed up and I'm just like, okay, like what did I get myself into, but whatever, let's just do it. So, uh, I picked the elite, um, time knowing, knowing that I would probably need the full amount of time from course opening to course close. And I actually finished, you know, within like 15 minutes of course closing. So, so that was, that was this big relief, but it was just really nerve wracking in terms of like, like the mental aspect, because you're given cutoff times and, uh, with those cutoff times, it was like, okay, you know, like I have to reach this point at this time. I have to, re- I have to make sure that, you know, I'm on track to beat, uh, this cutoff point at that time. And yeah, it was, it was quite a mental struggle to, to know, okay, I'm this far out. I have to keep going. And, you know, knowing that you have to do the sandbags twice, the whatever bucket carries twice, you know, it was, it was quite a challenge, uh, mentally for the Spartan Ultra. That would have been torture. Like <laughs> just think, just thinking of, uh, even like we had a terrible course for the beast, but anytime we did ba- the, the two Spartan races, I'm just thinking like both of them had moments where I'm like, man, glad that part's over. But then if you're doing the ultra, you gotta go, man, I gotta do that one more time. And that is yeah. awful. Like the obstacles itself and the weighted carries like or the weighted carry parts, are probably the easy things, but like, it's the actual terrain and the, the, the course that sometimes can just like really mess with you and, and, at least when you go through the first time, you're like, Hmm, I guess I didn't see this coming. That was a surprise. But then you just think, well, there we go again. <laughs> We're going to be back here. Ooh, that's, that sounds rough. Yeah. That's uh that's really crazy. I know when we did the beast, I remember running um, and coming up on some of those guys, the, the ones who are doing the ultra and they're like, yeah, is it, this is their second time doing the whole course. And I was like, Dude, I'm done at one. <laughs> like one is great. <laughs> those, those last hills would have been skipped. <laughs> That's, how was the recovery on that afterwards? So uh, it was, um, yeah. So uh, when I when it was it was pretty bad. Like it was like well, not bad, but like so. After I finished the course, like normally you would take a shower and, you know, you rinse off all the stuff, but at like 9 p.m. Uh, and, and I was shivering from the cold. And, and so, so I'm the only one that goes to the Spartan races. Like, and, and my wife was like, oh, you know, let me accompany him. Like, you know, I have no idea when I'm going to finish. I don't want you just lounging around, you know, for however long. And so, um, so I was cold. Um, and uh, I, I didn't, I didn't want to shower. And so uh, hearing you guys talk about the Spartan race and, and how, I guess, like, I think, I think it was Joe or somebody felt so miserable after even going, heading, heading your way to the car. That's how I felt like I was, I was so miserable heading to the car. And uh, it took me almost like an hour to get into the car because everything was about to cramp up um, from taking off, you know, any sort of dirty clothes to taking off, you know, my shoes because my shoes was caked in mud um, and whatever muscles that was used to uh, hold my shoe in place from the heel and pull my foot out of the shoe. It was, it, it was pretty rough um, getting home. Uh, it, it, I guess it was a typical uh, beast um I guess like recovery where the next day it was, it was pretty rough walking down the stairs. Um, uh, I, I don't know how true this is, but I read somewhere, oh, let's just, you know, just eat a bunch of greens and, you know, you have to get your antioxidants in your anti-inflammatory stuff in. So oh, you know, I ate a bunch of green stuff. I, I don't know how true it was, but, uh, but I, I did that. Um, you know, it, the, the, I, I just wanted to get home. Like after, after the, the, the Spartan ultra, I was just like, you know, I, I, I thought I would fall asleep from from being so tired, but you know, going through that Spartan Ultra in my mind, I was just like, I I I can't believe I did that. Uh, I just can't. I just want to get home. I yeah, it was just one of those things where like you just kind of like got fed up with it mm-hmm. uh, being on the course. Um, yeah. So yeah, it was uh it, it was it was it was fairly normal. Um, you know, I I took off work uh, the next two days, knowing that you know it, it I didn't want to have to trudge through uh, commute, you know, going through different peoples and avoiding others. So, you know, if in case anyone knocks into me, I don't just automatically fall to the ground or something. <laughs> Pick yeah. it up. <laughs> yeah. 
That's uh, that's good, man. Well, in your opinion, what's the best activity for building mental toughness? Uh, so I'm preparing for the, for, for the podcast, you know, I, I was thinking, you know, like, how, you know, how, how to answer this question, how to, how to give something that, um, you know, that someone else hasn't given, you know, there's, there's there was definitely a lot of great, uh, responses to this question. And you know, I, I really couldn't think of really anything, you know, cause, uh, you know, you can always say, oh yeah, I just sign up for something, have a goal for it. Um, or, um, or just, uh, yeah, it was, it was just, I, I couldn't, come up with something other than I guess a joker that I had in my head, which was, you know, have kids, you know, cause you know, kids definitely, uh, they, they build your mental toughness because you could yell at them, you know, at, at, like at one hour and the next hour you, you'll, you'll feel regret saying, Oh, you know, did, did I go too hard on them? You know, what was I too, uh, was I, was I too lenient maybe? And then you start feeling, you know, guilty. And then, so, so I guess in that regard, if, if you're a father, you definitely have a lot of mental toughness in that regard. Um, but I guess for the GGA, uh, or at least the all around, uh, physical, uh, training aspect, um, I guess it's more, uh, uh, so one of my favorite characters, uh, fictional characters is, uh, Batman. And so one of my favorite movies is, uh, the first one by Christopher Nolan, uh, Batman Beyond. And there's a line in there in which, uh, you know, young Bruce Wayne, he falls through, I guess, the, the bat cave, like hole. And he said, um, and it was father who was telling him something like, Oh, you know, like why, um, why do we fall? And, and the father, uh, afterwards says, uh, the reason why I fall is I'm probably butchering this phrase, but, uh, the reason why I fall is because we can learn to pick ourselves up again. And so, you know, it's, it's one of those things where I guess, you know, to build mental toughness is knowing that, you know, you are going to fail, uh, whether it's, you know, you're not going to wake up for a workout. Um, you know, you may have like an extra cheat day here and there, but you know, it's all part of, you know, the struggle, it's all part of the journey. And so, you know, just having one failure here or one failure there isn't going to, uh, going to derail you. And, and so, you know, just keep going, uh, know that the, that, the overall bigger picture is what matters. Um, and all the, uh, stuff in between, uh, between now and your, your goal is, is, you know, it's just all part of the journey, you know, as, as they say in football, you know, it's, uh, everything that happens in between those 60 minutes, uh, is, is all part of the game. So I guess that's, would be my answer. I love it, man. All right. If you could only have one piece of equipment to train with for the rest of your life, what would it be? Uh, I know some have said the rowers, I know some, uh, have said, you know, the barbells and someone I think recently said sandbag. Um, uh, I guess, I don't know. Um, I, I can't decide between, I guess, like, uh, the, the, I don't know. I, 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 if, if I had to pick one, um, I guess I would go with adjustable dumbbells um, with the extensions if if I can cheat a little because I know power blocks they go up to they go up to like one twenty and I think uh, I think the uh, the Iron Masters go up to like one seventy five or something like that so uh, yeah so if if I guess if if I can have something then I guess uh, something like that would be uh, the adjustable dumbbells where I could just do multiple movements uh, and isolation exercises. Um, some compounds, however, uh, yeah. So I guess that would be it. So what would be day. something you'd want to add to your gym? Uh, I don't have space for anything other than what I have now. Um, cause I have, uh, the family's bikes here. I have, uh, one of those, uh, uh, power wheels, cars that my parents, uh, bought for my kids. So, um, it's taking up space here, but I guess if I had, uh, I guess a functional trainer, um, one of those, uh, cable machines that, uh, you could, you know, do one arm or two arm cable exercises, uh, it, you know, it would just expand, I guess, like, you know, maybe like a chest workout or like, you know, one of those chest flies, um, or just, I guess a functional trainer would probably be it. <clears throat> awesome, man. Well, what is your best advice for all the garage gym athletes out there? Uh, 
you know, keep posting, you know, keep, uh, you know, keep posting, you know, your, your journey. Um, I know, uh, a few, a few have done so, um, you know, so, so just shouting out some, uh, some folks like, you know, the Sullivan's, you know, they, they posted their journey, uh, either from Nikki, um, and sorry, I forget, you know, the husband's name, but, um, I, I know, I know that you guys have been posting, uh, so I see you. Um, and so, you know, having that exposure guys, you know, is, is important. Um, so, you know, uh, I know that we're all internet strangers, but, you know, seeing, you know, you guys post, you know, it, it definitely helps and bolsters the community. Um, so besides posting in the GGA group, I, I would also uh, encourage you guys to post in whatever Facebook groups, uh, mainly like, I guess, Coop's uh, home gym group, because that's how I found you guys. So if nobody, you know, ever decided to post about, oh, you know, like, what do you guys do? And someone just, you know, no, nobody posted, oh, I, 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 I'm a part of this group called, you know, a garage gym athlete. And I would have never found you guys. I would probably would have you know, went with other groups to test the waters and stuff. So um, definitely spread the word. Um, and you know, and while you're here, you know, you know, just you know, keep encouraging others, and also um, you know, post yourself. You know, because you know, no matter where you are, if you're just lifting the barbell or if you just have like no equipment whatsoever, you know, you're still part of the group, and and you know, it's awesome to have you. So yeah, I love it, Brian. Sure. That's. Yeah, that's great. Um, well, I really do appreciate your time today and for being a garage gym athlete and, and, uh, really for, for everything. I know you, you are one of those people who posts and you, we get to catch little pieces of your story here and there. And it's always motivational. So thanks for being a part of the community, man. And, and thanks for your yeah, time. Today. Thank you. Of course. Thanks, thanks for listening guys. to the garage gym athlete podcast. If you want to learn more, go to garage You can learn about our training. Let us send you a copy of our book, the garage gym athlete, or you can even get featured on the Garage Gym Athlete Podcast. Thanks for listening.